Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. We're currently about five nautical miles north of Porto in Portugal. And in about half an hour, we're gonna leave here and head a little bit closer to the city center. Porto is supposed to be one of the must-see cities in Portugal, but we have a slightly ulterior motive by going there. One of the items I've always wanted to fit aboard Athena is a dive compressor. There is a paintball store of sorts, I think it is, in Porto that's an official culture dealer. I messaged them a few days ago and they should have a single 230 volt unit in stock. We're going for an AC powered version so that we can run it off of the juice from our solar panels rather than relying on gasoline. And because the boat is set up for 230 volts, it makes a lot of sense for us to get the dive compressor here in Europe before we cross the Atlantic and head into 110 volt territory. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. We got into this marina kind of late and by the way this marina is certainly not the nicest place we've stopped. We're tied up right at the entrance into the marina so it's been quite bumpy. But uh, yeah we got in kind of late so uh, I completely forgot to swap out our courtesy flag. In the hope of being perceived as being courteous we are gonna hurry up and uh, swap out the Spanish courtesy flag for the Portuguese one. And up she goes. If you watched the end of last week's video, you'll have seen that it got pretty dang bumpy here at the entrance into the marina, which is where visitors tie up. So we've got out a ton of mooring lines and a ton of fenders. So uh, let's get all of that put away so we can get going. Go ahead and let that go, Lavi. <laughs> Westwind, this is Athena. Athena, Westwind. Uh, you guys have seen the giant cruise ship coming in, right? Yep, just wondering what I would like to do to not be in his way. Yep, I'm wondering the same thing. There was tons of room in the outer harbor for us to wait in one corner while the colossal cruise ship finagled its way in. Once the entrance to the harbor was clear, we slipped past the cruise ship at a respectful distance. After a short four mile trip, we were in the mouth of the river Douro. We called Douro Marina on the VHF and they sent out a dinghy to escort us to an available slip. The pontoons are rather close together, but we made it safely into our new home without adding any scrapes, stings or bruises to Athena. I've very much been looking forward to us getting to Porto, both because it'll be really nice to be able to finally get the dive compressor aboard the boat, but also because Porto is supposed to be a really cool city. When you stay at Douro Marina, you get a free port tasting and tour included with your stay. We're gonna head to that with Anas and Stine from Westwind, and then we're gonna check out the center of town. Ava and I are not really big drinkers, but much like with the whiskey tour in Ireland, Porto is of course known for port. So we set out on a short 15 minute walk to get to Churchill's Lodge. Ava was in charge of the navigation and chose what turned out to be the slightly less traveled path. It got more and more narrow and bumpier the further we went, but eventually we did get to our destination. The tour was relatively short and lasted around 30 minutes. It included some general information about the history of port and different products offered by Churchill's. One of the highlights on the tour was when the guide opened this window and gave us an amazing view of Porto.
after the tour, there was a tasting of one white and two red ports. I personally did not really like the white one, but again, much like with the whiskey tour, it was fun to try something new. After having completed the tasting, Ava and I headed to the center of town. If you're feeling lazy, there's a gondola that can take you from sea level to the top of the iconic bridge that connects Gaia and Porto. The gondola costs about 6 euros per person, and it doesn't offer a better view than the bridge, so only spend the 6 euros if you don't want to climb the stairs. Porto has a lot to offer and it's well worth a visit. Like most visits to major cities, there is an elevated risk of sore feet and legs. After hours and hours of walking, we picked up some local pastry and sat down for a well-deserved break. It is the next day, our feet are sore, but our morale is high because today is dive compressor day. I've been diving since I was 15 and it's something I really love to do, but it's also something that's sometimes hard to find time for because it's very time consuming, especially if you don't live in a house that's right next to a good dive spot, because then you gotta get all your gear ready, jump in the car, go to a dive shop, probably get a bottle from there and then head to somewhere where you're gonna be diving. Whereas here on the boat, now with the dive compressor we're going to be picking up today, we'll have all of the gear right on the boat, so we'll just have to anchor somewhere, jump in the dinghy, and then we can go diving. The culture dealer, like I mentioned, is also a paintball store, which feels a little bit odd, but they have sold dive compressors to several Danish long-distance cruising boats that I know of. They were very friendly, and the service was top-notch. I'll include a link down in the description. Ta-da! The new dive compressor. Now I have both sore feet and sore arms. This thing weighs 38 kilos or 84 pounds. This is the absolute bog standard, completely entry level, no bells and whistles model. We don't have automatic shutoff and we don't have automatic venting either, but that keeps the price relatively low. We paid 2200 euros for the dive compressor and one extra filter. Now, at least in Denmark, there seems to be two big brands for dive compressors. It's Bauer and Coltree. Bauer has a better reputation, but they're typically also more than double the price. Now, we're not going to be running a dive shop or anything like that, so more than likely, this little guy is ever only going to be filling bottles for myself and Ava. So, yeah, I think this is perfect for us. Athena is 38 feet long, and sadly that doesn't translate into an unlimited amount of room inside of the boat. So for us to find a location to store, secure, and potentially install the dive compressor, it's going to have to be a little bit of a compromise. For now, I'll just toss the dive compressor into the aft cabin just as a temporary fix. We do have room in the technical compartment to install it. It's going to be a little bit of a compromise because we'll have to move the dive compressor to service the hydronic diesel heater. So it's not ideal, but I think it'll be okay. It was really nice walking around Porto. It is a beautiful city, but I think the real gem of this area is the little fishing village right outside the marina here. The village of Aferrada is located at the bottom of the Douro River, which I just found out is known as the artery to the world. And because of that artery, lots of fishermen migrated here from all over Portugal. And as the fishing industry grew, so did the community here. To this day, the community really takes pride in their fishing heritage, and you can especially see that in their many, may I add, delicious seafood restaurants. And similar to the center of Porto, all the building facades are covered in tile, except here it seems like every single building is covered in tiles, and they're just so beautiful and unique. I could walk down these streets for hours, and honestly, I don't think any two buildings are alike. A little classic filigree work. This one is pretty groovy. A little blue motif. This one's got a lot of detail 
I'm really digging it. This one with like the classic solid blue with the red doors. Ooh, I love this one. These ones have a very cool hand painted design and they have a little texture to them. These guys went bold and I fully and completely support that. Behind me is the Town Heritage Museum that's dedicated to the life and customs of the people of the town. And it's filled with a ton of donated artifacts that talk about the history of fishing here in Afuada. But there is something inside that I am really excited to show you guys. It's an entire room dedicated to tiny miniature replica boats. Miniature masts, miniature oars, miniature fishing nets, and teeny tiny miniature acres. These two are replicas of fishing boats that would be common to find in this area. These ones are giant miniatures, but look at all that detail. I'm pretty sure that all the boats you see here are commonly found in this area, and all the replicas are handmade by locals. This boat behind me right here is a traditional fishing boat here of Afuada, and when they were putting the Heritage Museum together, they wanted to find a traditional boat to display, but when they were walking down the pier to find one, they couldn't find any that were untouched by modern luxuries like outboards and I'm assuming Bluetooth heads. So two brothers, the Marks, off to build a complete replica and this is the one that you see here. Fishing is such a male-dominated industry, but it looks like here in Afuada, the women were in charge of sorting, selling, and eventually canning all the fish. Oh my gosh, we could use some of these, the rubber rings that help protect your hands when you're line fishing. I think this is a good example of how active the community is here in Afuada. Down by the shore, there is a communal laundry or a wash house where you can come and wash all your laundry in a big water basin. We've actually seen a lot of them in Spain, but this is the first one that we have seen active on a daily basis. And then you can come and hang all your laundry up on this maze of clotheslines made out of sticks, line, and rock. It is really incredible. It looks like a big art installation. Good morning, guys. It is 6.45. As you can see, the sun is starting to come up here behind me. Super beautiful. We left the marina a little past six this morning, and uh, now we're just about to head out through the entrance into the Douro River. As always, I'm in my full fall weather gear with three layers of clothes, and Mads is simply wearing a fleece and a hat. It's just after nine and things are going pretty well. I think it was a good idea that we waited to go until today. The state of the ocean just seems a lot calmer. We just have these nice big smooth swells and we are sailing with three other boats. One of them is our friends on West Wind and the other are just two boats that are going in the same direction as us and we seem to be making this diamond formation. So. It just happened naturally. It's pretty cool. But yeah, things are going great. Also, the sun's out, so I was able to take off a layer, so that's always nice. But for now, it's just keeping an eye out for orcas and fishing nets. I slept horribly last night, and as a result of that, I've been napping a lot today. And I just woke up from a nap, and now there's only 20 miles left. And there we have it, today's destination. The place is called uh, Figa, Figure. Okay, something the fuss, and uh, it's not supposed to be the nicest stop, but it is 60 some odd miles from our last stop, which is about what we can manage before it gets dark. And with the threat of those fishing net looming, it seems like a pretty good idea not to be sailing out here in the dark. Good morning, guys. We've had a very comfortable night here in this marina. The water is flat calm and there's no creaking of lines like up in Douro. Now, we were planning on going to Nasseray this morning, which I was really excited about, but uh, we're not going to be able to. If you look real close, there's a red light there. 
One of the interesting things about sailing here in Portugal is that the entrances into harbors or marinas and rivers can be rather heavily influenced by sea state, rain, inland, and wind. So much so that there is this website here that tells you whether or not you're allowed to go into a specific opening or harbor. If we take a look at where we are right now, it says bar close to vessels under 35 meters. We're 11 and a half meter, which is a lot less than 35 meters. Now the red light out there on the marina entrance, that reflects this state. So yeah, we're not actually allowed to leave. If we leave now, we will be heavily fined. And I think the entrance is gonna stay closed until maybe Thursday or Friday next week. This is the sea state forecast. We are right here by this little bump and the red color here represents five meters or 16 feet worth of swell. And if we fast forward a little bit, you can see that's gonna hit us. And then it's gonna stay here for a really long time until Thursday next week where everything seems to calm down again. The marina we're in here seems really nice and protected, but we were both really looking forward to being able to push on further south. But yeah, that's not gonna happen. So it looks like we'll be trapped here in Figaro... Figure de Foz. Yeah, figure, figure what? Figura, figure <laughs> Fig It looks like we'll be trapped in Da Foz for the next four or five days, which is not that awesome because this place has well, maybe it has a fine reputation, I guess, but it's supposed to be a little bit touristy and it would be nicer to be stuck in one of the other smaller villages, but there's nothing we can do about that. So uh, yeah, we hope to see you guys back here at Bordathena next week for yet more whatever we'll do see here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. Really as, stay tuned. <laughs> as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you. Shipping deadlines <laughs> for the holidays. <laughs> okay, we'll start over. Okay. Ho, 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 guys. We almost forgot. Shipping deadlines for the holidays. <laughs> Ava's supposed to say more stuff here. <laughs> okay, if you want to get your shipment by December 25th, you need to place your order through the Sail Life shop by December 12th. For the U.S. Yep. Check the description of this video for details. We'll use that. <laughs> okay. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Should we just watch it? <laughs>